to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. Welcome to another episode of Pit Lane Parlay. I am your host, Mike Jokum, joined today by general manager for Wayne Taylor Racing, Travis Hogue. Travis, how are you and how are you uh, handling everything right now? Well, first, thanks for having me on. And uh, I guess I'm probably about the same as everybody, trying to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah, very well said there. So we will dive right into it here. You were so I was I was talking with some people beforehand. You actually did some racing before you were on the uh, the management side of things, if I'm not mistaken. Correct? Uh, oh, I worked as a mechanic. Uh, okay. Didn't actually drive or anything. Worked as a mechanic. So let's let's start there. Mechanic. What what got you into I guess motorsports to start and and on the you know becoming a mechanic side of things. Well, uh, well, kind of a long story. I, I started out actually in top fuel drag racing. So started building short blocks and stuff. I, I moved out here from, from Iowa and it was one of those situations of, you know, what do you want to do after you get out of school? And my brother-in-law was working in uh, drag racing. So it's like, why don't you come travel for a year and, and try this out? So I kind of did that and traveled for, I think the, the first two years I traveled, it was like 280 some days a year each year. So um, kind of got out of it, went back to, back to the roots and went back, kind of did some farming for a year and, uh, got a call, come back out. Can you work for us a year? We're shorthanded. So one of those situations where I came back out and then I've been out here ever since I went to work for Chip Ganassi for a couple of years and, um, worked as kind of a body work mechanic and a front end mechanic and kind of decided that you know, maybe it was, it was kind of monotonous for me doing the mechanic stuff. It was fun, enjoyed it, enjoyed pit stops, but I, I wanted more of a challenge. So I, I opted to get out of the racing side of it again. And I stayed local and went back into, again, back into the farming stuff and worked locally for a year. And a friend of mine called and said, Hey, you know, Wayne Taylor racing starting up They're they're looking for some contract guys to do a couple weekends. Can you, can you go give them a hand to get started? And I was thinking 2000 and end of 2006 when they, when they started up. So I, yeah, I'll go do a couple races and then, uh, well, now here I am today. So it was, it was a good journey um, coming, coming through as a mechanic and then took the mechanic role, moved into a crew chief role, um, had a lot of good people to learn from. Um, when I came on board, Simon Hodgson was the general manager. So he kind of took me under his wing a little bit, kind of taught me a bunch of stuff as we as we moved through the ranks and moved up. And then I got more uh, closer with Wayne and Max and probably couldn't ask for, for better people to teach you the business and the industry and the way that they run Wayne Taylor Racing with the B2B side, with relationships being the number one priority and also your employees. So it was a, it was a long journey. But uh, I, def- I definitely miss doing pit stops. I miss being part of the actual action on pit lane side. But uh, I like the challenge of, of doing the general manager side of stuff. It's, it's a new challenge every day, and it's a, it's a different challenge. And there's always, there's always something that you're, you're trying to learn. So from a, a general manager perspective, we, we hear what general managers do in other sports. But what does a general manager for a motorsports and IMSA team actually do on a day-to-day basis or on a race weekend type basis? Is there any difference between the two? You know, I think it kind of varies uh, for every team a little bit. Uh, The way we kind of operate is when we started, you know, back in 2014, when I moved into kind of the team manager role, we just had the the DPI car and it was a, the role was a lot different then. It was more of uh, just managing the day-to-day stuff of dealing with you know, hotels and dealing with budgets and personnel, uh, making sure the team had everything they needed to when we grew and we, we decided to start trying to grow the business into something a little bit, a little bit more, uh, which meant we went into trail racing and started doing some other side projects. You know, we've done everything from some building leases and some buying equipment and moving stuff around. And as we've grown, the, the roles become more, 
of the business side of things. You're still active with the race side. Uh, I spend majority of my days working with the engineering and with uh, Chris on the crew chief side and, and Brett on the other side. And then you are, when everything's done with the racing, then it's back to the business side of where are we at with clients? Where are we at with our partners working with Wayne and with Krista on, on that kind of stuff. So I think every team has a different, a different role that would be considered a general manager, but for Wayne Taylor racing, it's more of a, an overall view. Uh, Wayne likes to say, we have to look at things from a 50,000 foot view and that's kind of the role that it is. It's you, you need to be involved in every aspect of it but you can't be overly involved in every aspect of it because you want to continue to keep the business growing as well. Makes total sense. So you guys won the Rolex 24 this year and also back in 2017, won Sebring back in 2017, a couple Petit Le Mans wins, some Detroit Grand Prix wins. Is there one win out of the, I mean, list of, of amazing wins you guys have had since the program started that, sticks out to you for any sort of memorable reason? I think they're, they're all very important. Um, there, there's probably not a single win. Uh, I would say a streak of wins. Um, when we won, you know, when we first came out with the DPI and we started, we won the 24 and then carried on and won the first races that year. I think that showed how, how great our team works together. It showed the true talent of the team that we have put together um it's a big the competition is huge and with the partners that we've able to put together and and wayne has and the team members that we have we started building this car in you know july very little testing on it and then to go through and just keep dominating for that first part of the season i think that's what sticks out in my mind the most and i don't know if it's the wins that sticks out or watching what the team did together to to pull this all in. I think that was just pretty incredible. Awesome. Um, so our first couple episodes with Wayne Taylor, I've talked to uh, Chris Bennett and one other guy. Oh, my God, his name is escaping me right now. How about Bill Mullen? Bill Mullen. How, how, do, how could I forget Bill? Uh, let's, let's chalk it up <laughs> to the fact I don't know what day it is anymore. Um, I, I'm with you there. What, what can you tell us about Bill, who was a fantastic interview, and Chris, who was super fun to talk to last week? Uh, what is it like working with those guys? Well, Bill Bill and I have been with Wayne Taylor Racing since we started. Bill was here before I was in the 2006. So when we started, it was just Bill and I, and we had another, another gentleman we called him Buckwheat. And the three of us were the ones working on the car the whole time. So we started then, and we did everything together pretty much for the first couple of years, Bill was kind of uh, the lead mechanic on everything. And again, I was supposed to just be a contract helper and Bill convinced me to stay on. Um, so Bill's just, he's, he's a great guy. Like he's kind of the heart and soul of the team that is there because he's, he's the guy that you can go to for machining. He's the guy that can go to, to ask what happened 10 years ago because he knows that he's been there. He's done it. And he's probably the most even keel guy we have. He's just nothing really phases him. Awesome. Yeah. It was, and it was, I guess, you know, he's, he's, uh, he's also been with Wayne a long time. So if you want a story about Wayne, Bill's the guy to go to. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he definitely indicated that when, when we chatted. So uh, a quick non racing question I've been dropping in the middle of these episodes if budget wasn't a factor, what would your favorite daily driver car be? Uh, you know, to be honest, I'm I'm just I'm a guy from Iowa, so I'm just happy with my GMC truck. That's that's pretty much keeps me happy every day. Hey, I like it. That's that's no problem at all. A good a good honest answer there. So, <laughs> Wayne Taylor, in addition to the DPI, also has the Lamborghini Super Trofeo cars. Uh, do you are you involved in that at all, or more just the DPI side? Uh, I'm involved in both. So the way we've structured the program is, uh, I've oversee both programs. We have you know Chris Bennett, who, as you said, you interviewed. He's really uh, more of my right hand on everything we do on operations, as well as the DPI car. And then we have another uh, gentleman, Brett, who is on the Lamborghini, who kind of is the crew chief over there. So. I work with both programs. Uh, I work on the the business side on Lamborghini, on working with clients and bringing in customers, and how we're going to move move forward with that. And I do the same thing with Wayne on the on the ten car, and then I manage budgets for both. So I 
we have separate teams, but as Wayne Taylor Racing, we are one team. Everybody, we could have everybody working on the DPI car for the 24, and we could turn around and have everybody working on the five Lamborghinis we have going into the first race. So um, we're all involved in it all, but we do have some separation when we need it. Awesome. Have you ever gotten to drive one of those Lamborghinis? Oh, uh, no, just, just a couple short short stints, maybe maybe around the track once, but you know, I, I will tell you, we did uh, we did have a mechanic that had a had a drive in one once in, in Laguna a couple of years ago that that uh, was quite funny. When uh, you leave the Laguna and you go to the top and they tell you to turn left and go to pit lane, he uh, he missed the turn and went out on a hot race track with the uh, with the car to take a lap right after a session. So we do have one mechanic that's made a lap around Laguna in one. But we're definitely going to have to get him on the show at some point here. <laughs> we won't out him for now, just in case. But I will find out. We will definitely talk about that in the future. That's a good one. So, you know, during this crazy COVID-19 time right now, how has that changed your role as a general manager? How have you adapted to the circumstances in order to you know, get as much of your job done as possible? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I, I enjoy challenges. Um, and this has been a totally different challenge that is – probably something that I can't say that I enjoy, but I do uh, think that you can learn something from everything. So the change has been, you know, there's, there's a lot of different aspects that you have to look at from a race team on, on what's important. And as I mentioned before, the wins that we, that we had together was a proof of the team that we have put together. And so one of the main concerns is always, how do you make sure in this situation that you keep the team together, you make sure the employees are sorted, and then you keep the business running as well as work with your partners and the clients that you have. So my job has changed in this, this stimulus package comes out and you know this thing is an 865 page bill that you're supposed to automatically understand how you, how you make that help with your small business. So myself and, and one of our accountants have been working constantly on that and trying to understand where Wayne Taylor Racing fits in some of the other packages that are coming out with the ultimate goal and, you know, with Wayne and Max's backing, we, we have been able to do this is to keep all of the employees without seeing the devastating effects that others are. And because we have partners and because we have, you know, clients that are with us at Lamborghini, we've worked with the partners, we've worked with our clients and our goal is to come out of this with none, none of us getting hurt. So that means, we move some stuff around on the day-to-day -day business operations that we can help with the partners on saying, okay, we're going to move this, this, and this, and that'll help you. And then a client's going to say, I'm going to move this, this, and this, and that's going to help you. So it's been a not a really a learning curve as much as it has been trying to fit all the pieces together because nobody is in it just for themselves. We're in this as a team. And that that has been a good uh, a good thing to see it, seeing people just come together to try to try to make what's best for them and and the other thing is is with with the employees you know Wayne and I talk uh, daily and usually you know, a couple times an hour possibly with Wayne the biggest thing is we've got to make sure we take care of our partners and our and our employees because without the employees then what are you what are you doing so that's what's nice about working with Wayne and Max. Awesome. Yeah, that's a really good answer there. So we just talked about Wayne. So I'll, I'll ask the question I've asked everybody. What is it like working for such a legendary man in, in Wayne Taylor? Uh, it depends on the day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you know, I've, I probably can say I've, I've learned so much from from Wayne over the last you know, four years of, of me trying to step into this role. He he's always told me that the most important thing in anything is your relationships. And with him, everything is about making sure the employees are taken care of, making sure that everybody understands that he's part of everything. He wants to know that he's going to do everything he can to take care of them. And in return, he's built the, you know, the Wayne Taylor Racing Empire. This is this is Wayne's, well, this is Wayne's baby. And I don't know that there's a more passionate person that you could work for. That you know that he's always got your back at some some way, shape, or form. He's never going to let anybody on his team down, if at all possible. And and that's just something that's a rarity. You don't you don't find that in everybody anymore. Yeah, I love that. I think that's kind of along the same lines as as what I've heard so far. So. 
I'll wrap it up here with a, a fun question. Thank you very much for joining me this, uh, this afternoon here. If we were to have a Wayne Taylor movie, what actor is playing Travis Hogue? Oh, uh, man, I don't even know a lot of actors' names. That shows you how much <laughs> I watch TV. I'm going to, uh, you know what? You're going to be better off to ask the next person you interview that one because I don't even know any actors' names, to be honest. I can't think of anything. All right. So everybody who's listening to this episode will post Travis's little bio from the Wayne Taylor Racing website. And we will let you guys pick what actor, because like you, I am terrible with names. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't remember. Well, that's going to be a dangerous one for me to see, isn't it? <laughs> well, I hope it's fun and entertaining and gives people something to laugh about or, or, you know, get their creativity going during this uh, you know time when we're all stuck at home. But I, I am going to put it on social media once the episode releases, uh, which would be Monday. So I'm, I'm definitely interested to see how it will <laughs> turn out. I've never done this before, and I literally pulled it the thought right out of my head without uh, putting too much thought into it. So it should be very interesting. Well, we can make something fun then out of this, right? You know, everybody's sitting at home. They're stuck at home. Let's uh, use me as a guinea pig and see what we can, what good comments we can get. I, th I think the guys from Wayne Taylor Racing are probably the ones I'm scared most of. <laughs> yeah, and, and whoever whoever has our favorite answer will win one of my uh, Cadillac DPI keychains that uh, a friend made that I have a couple extra somewhere in my office here. So. Well, uh, we'll make it worth worth your while. I'm I'm sure I can jump over to the post office uh, on the day next week once uh, once we once we find a winner. So, again, Travis, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you stay safe and and look forward to seeing you at a track, hopefully sooner rather than later. But thank you very much and and uh, have a, a good rest of your afternoon. You do as well. Thanks for having me on and take care. Thanks a lot.